Hi, I'm Carol Anderson, Charles Howard Candler Professor of African American Studies at Emory University. I've had the opportunity to look at two incredible documents in the Reed Family Papers. The first is a voter registration uh, card written in 1871, coming out of Texas. Why that is so important is that remember, coming out of the Civil War in Texas from 1865 to 1868, more than 1,000 African Americans were lynched in just a wave of domestic terrorism. It took Congress to pass the Enforcement Acts of 1870, which banned domestic terrorism, and it took the 15th Amendment, which was ratified in 1870, that said, the state shall not abridge the right to vote on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. So that's 1870. And so now here we have a black man registering to vote in 1871. It begins to give a sense about what the power of believing in democracy and having governmental forces who also believe in democracy, who are stopping the kind of terrorism that blocks African Americans, that blocks citizens from their right to vote. And then there's another document. And this document is a poll tax receipt dated in 1904 from the same family, the Reed family. Now why this one becomes so amazing is that so here in the earlier document, we see the government weighing in to, to value and support the right to vote. But by the time we get to 1904, particularly in the South, we have the rise of Jim Crow and massive disfranchisement with all of these various tools designed to stop African Americans from casting a ballot, to strip African Americans of their voting rights. The poll tax was one of those devices. In Texas, it originally began about 1871 or so, but then it was designed to pay for public schools. But by the time we get to 1902 when Texas first passed its poll tax, it is designed as a tool of disfranchisement because it's building on the legacies of poverty coming out of slavery. But the Reeds were a relatively wealthy family and they were able to pay the poll tax because what that poll tax did, while it looked relatively benign and like a small amount, it amounted to actually about two to 6% of a farm family's annual income. Imagine paying two to 6% of your annual income for your right to vote. The Reeds were able to do it. And what it's beginning to say is that this is a family that values American democracy and understands how foundational the right to vote is to a thriving democracy and how they're willing to overcome every barrier, every rule so that they can in fact participate in this democracy. This is a valuable, valuable collection for what it's telling us about America. Thank you.